Hi, I'm Richard Gage, architect with Richard Gage 911 and steward at PAPA, Protecting All Protectors Alliance.org. We are going to raise together today the final $3,100 of our campaign to be in Las Vegas at the National Fire Protection Association Convention, June 19 to 21, coming right up in about a month. But before I tell you more about that, let me introduce our wonderful guests. We have Chris Joya, volunteer firefighter and fire commissioner, formerly at the Franklin Square Munson Fire District. Welcome, Chris. Well, Richard. Awesome to have you here. Eric Lawyer is also with us. He's a firefighter, was retired now after 25 years in emergency services, mostly with Seattle Firefighting Department. Welcome, Eric. Thank you, Richard. It's an honor to be here. Incredible to have you. This is an, a, a great opportunity to let all of our guests and viewers know about what we're so excited about getting to Las Vegas, not because we want to gamble. Well, we are gambling in a way, aren't we, guys? We're betting that our supporters are going to help us raise the final $3,000, 3100 altogether, uh, for the effort to get us an evidence booth at the convention this year. We went to Boston last year. We connected with 300 firefighters, fire protection officials, and others, we've got their emails, they signed up. We found that they're interested and want to know more about this controversy between the National Fire Protection Association and the NIST report about Building 7. It's a real problem. And our firefighters are going to tell you all about that problem. In fact, Chris, let's start with you. What is the big problem here? The big problem is that when NIST conducted their investigation into the collapse of the, uh, the Salomon Brothers building, building number seven. They ignored NFPA standard 921, which articulates how investigations should be conducted into fire and explosion incidents in great detail. And this ignored that standard, and they should have followed that. Eric, what are the um, st the current procedures for fighting fires in high rises, and, and and why do you think there's a problem here with Building Seven? For decades now, it's been a, a standard operating procedure to actually set up your command post, typically in the the lobby or in the building itself, to have staging to approach that uh, high rise from within it. It's usually more protected because you don't have the falling debris mm -hmm. if you're inside of the building. The challenge here is that NIST is claiming this building collapsed without any real warning to anybody and that this could happen again at any point. At that, on that day, it was the only day this has ever happened. So if that's true, then the NFPA national standards need to be updated so that firefighters are not taking these same similar actions because if we can have any building spontaneously collapse, this should not be an approach we're still using. However, it is. And what that tells, tells me and many others is that there, this was an anomaly on that day, and we need to address that specifically. Yeah, in fact, this is forced to acknowledge that this building came down at free fall. I know that's as fast as a bowling ball falling from the sky, and that means that not one of the 80 columns in this building gave any resistance. Now, that's not what we're talking to the firefighters about. We just want them to know that it came down in seven seconds, and if that came down by normal office fires, as NIST claimed that it did, uh, then that could happen to you guys who are going into those burning buildings trying to put them out. And don't you tell the occupants in the buildings to stay in place? And why do you do that? It is a standard. It's a standard tactic to do what's called protect in place. And that has to be made on the scene. The challenge is now with that, I just, with images like these burn in our head that this can happen, it causes a lot of confusion and a lot of, um, I guess you could say panic at the scene with uh, the people who might want to get out of that building. Traditionally, if there's not a large fire load, it's safer to stay in the building, put the fire out, and then remove occupants from the building so they're not being subjected to the smoke and heat as they're trying to escape the building. So it is a big issue, and this is why we're bringing it to the NFPA, um, inviting them to basically get really clear on are they going to, are they acknowledging and changing their 
their guidelines and suggestions based on the NIST report, or are they ignoring it? So far, it's basically been ignored, but it hasn't been stated publicly that that's what's happening. So it's causing confusion in fire grounds across the country and around the world. And we saw that in Grenfell in London, that there was a, a there was confusion on the scene of, do we pull people out or do we keep them in the building? And if you're going off misinformation, you're going to have mis you're going to have misinformed decisions on a fire ground. And we just don't have room for that. Guys, we don't want to be gambling with the firefighters and the public's lives. We're going to Las Vegas and we're going to tell them, Hey, we're in the gambling capital of the world. What are the odds that this building came down the way NIST said it came down. Chris, tell us about the history of high-rise buildings that have been on fire. Have any of them come down? Not to my knowledge. Uh, there have never been any, any buildings outside of the Salomon Brothers building that collapsed due to fire. But on 9-11, this was the first one then. It's unprecedented? Absolutely. It's a reinforced steel frame building that... Uh, had minimal fire load. The fires were not raging through the building and the building experienced a, a sudden global collapse in the afternoon and it came down. NIST actually says it experienced a total freefall for a few seconds and it came down in about seven seconds, which is absolutely unheard of. Do you think that the firefighters deserve to know about this third tower on 9-11 that came down? And how many of them? No, it's, it's a tremendous safety issue if steel frame buildings subject to fire load over the course of a few hours, if that weakens the structure to the point that it's going to experience a global collapse, such as the one that we witnessed with the Salomon Brothers building, that that is huge. and the Rules uh, have to be changed to reflect that. Eric, why do you think uh, it's so important for us to be in Las Vegas? Jim, to me, it's awareness. The majority of firefighters, even last year when we were in Boston, the majority of the firefighters and fire professionals that came to the booth weren't aware of this building collapse. So we're having to make decisions still every day across this country as fire, fire professionals. And if we don't have the right information, we can't make those decisions. So this is critical for us to raise awareness and for people to become more aware. We're inviting the NFPA to make it more transparent because if they're not changing their national standards, they need to make it clear why so that the firefighters and fire professionals can be clear. There's a reason we're not making upgrades from this fire collapse on 9-11. And that would help inform these firefighters that, hey, we don't, we don't agree with this investigation that was done on this building. And that investigation didn't follow national standards. It actually destroyed physical evidence. It's the first time we've ever had a major collapse in, of a fire, a fire protected building like this. And it's it, because of that, it should have been so thoroughly over tested, yet it wasn't. The evidence was destroyed. So how can we make, how can we have any confidence whatsoever in that investigation? if we don't even have physical evidence that we're basing these decisions on. And what did you learn in Boston when we went last year uh, about the willingness uh, of these fire professionals and firefighters to, to listen to this information? Yeah, when people hear it, they, they do want to learn more. They're, in a way, they're kind of surprised that they haven't heard about it. And that alone was, what it, was kind of, a, I'd say, a, a red flag to some of them. Like, why haven't we heard about this? And so there is an openness and especially when it's related to fire operations and changing those, because everyone wants to make fire grounds safer. If, it, again, if we, if we don't have the right information, we can't do that. So there's an openness for this to be shared more and for us to have more of a conversation openly. Well, um, I'm all excited about going myself. This is the first NFPA conference that I went to last year in Boston. And well, boy, we were just reeling them in. It was like... Um, uh, catching fish in a barrel. They were eager to learn more. We show them this building coming down, building seven, and you can see us working the booth here. And they just look at it and they go, and we go, you know, did you know what this is? And they go, oh, well, that's a controlled demolition. We tell them it's the Solomon Brothers building. We let them know that this is a type one construction, a fire rated high rise. And 
this one came down. It's the only one. So it's very important. It's an unprecedented event. We tell them that, indeed, we've got to get the information in front of the fire chiefs, the NFPA officials who make uh, policy. And would you like to be involved in hearing about the discussion as it progresses? And they go, yeah, well, keep me, keep me on your list. So, yeah, we're going to try to get 500 <laughs> this year on our list. Uh, so because we've got it kind of figured out now. Well, thoughts from you, Chris? When NIST issued their report seven years later on the collapse of the Solomon Brothers building after conducting their three-year investigation, the spokesperson, when they came out with the, the report publicly, even acknowledged that this was an extraordinary once-in-a-lifetime event never seen before in high-rise buildings, which was a total global collapse due to simple office fires. So at least NIST acknowledged that this was a totally unusual event that had happened. You know, that the fact that they didn't even talk about it for seven years, that, that speaks volumes. So you got it, guys. This is the opportunity to send the dream team from PAPA, Protecting All Protectors Alliance, to get our evidence booth in front of these professionals, go to the website protectingall.org and click on Send Papa to NFPA because we go there and we're going there to win big in Vegas, but we need your backing. $3,100. That's about $10 to $100 each for a whole bunch of us. Everybody pitches in. We get to go. Chris, final thoughts. I would just say, please help us get get there and get the message out and get the other uh, dialogue going between NFPA and NIST. And Eric? Yeah, I would say thank you. If you're considering contributing at all, any amount helps. And this is the right place as fire professionals and firefighters. And it's one of the largest uh, fire professional uh, conferences in the country. And it's with the organization that actually sets the national standards. The putting us there in front of these people is exactly where we need to be. So any amount you can do would be greatly appreciated. And it's going to take all of us to continue this conversation to get the changes that are needed for the firefighters in our communities to be safer. Once you click on this donate button, you end up on our PayPal donate page. You don't have to use PayPal. You can use your credit card and you can send a check. There's an opportunity here to, to send a check right here to protecting all. Make that check out and send it to that address there. I'm a steward of Papa, so your money's safe in our hands. Gail and I will be there as usual. She's the mother of a firefighter, and uh, she'll be talking from the heart in Las Vegas. So join us. If you can't be there physically, join us virtually. Thanks again, everybody. We'll catch up with you later. Thank you. Thank you.